Uh, for our course, if you could go ahead and turn to page 627, we'll say Jesus is the sweetest name I know, and we'll go ahead and sing through that two times. You can remain seated.
evening. Uh, in the end of the chapter, we'll be this text. So if you are ready to get yourself positioned for that, please do so. Um, uh, that was uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13, through the end of the chapter. Now, we uh, much in prayer for our midweek services, uh, again, Thursday, 7 p.m., so make sure you are taking the gospel with you wherever you go. Uh, make sure you have a couple of tracks that are handy in the car, um, in the parking lot, wherever you are, uh, so that way we can get the gospel out and to get word out. Don't forget to bring a friend. And you can get plenty of time. This is a heads-up notice. You have plenty of time between now and then to get a friend, to make a friend. So just let you know. Um, so be aware of that. February, as we know it, is coming to an end. It happened very quick. So uh, we are excited for new things that are happening uh, as March approaches. Uh, be in prayer for this coming uh, Saturday, which is the first Saturday in March. We're having a outreach uh, ministry here at the church. So uh, again, now's the time to make your friends. If you don't make any friends by Thursday, it's going to give you another buffer zone. So you got Saturday to make some friends. On Sunday, we'll be right back in God's house, so uh, be much in prayer for that, and uh, be available if you can. At this time, we'll stand for the offering, and we'll ask God for his blessing on the offering this morning. Let's go to the Lord in word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for this opportunity given to us to give cheerfully. I pray you help us to give liberally according to uh, your resources, Lord. We ask you to help us, Lord, uh, to, uh, to focus that, that gift into your kingdom. Help us to be uh, mindful of how it's going to be blessing uh, several, uh, not just in the area of Mobile, but beyond. Lord, help us to have our hearts uh, and minds prepared uh, mission-wise. Lord, help us to be uh, useful in that area. We ask that you just give us your blessing on this offering this morning. Your name we pray.
text this morning is 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, beginning in verse 13. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. The Bible says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with them. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that they, oh, sorry, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for this time together around the word. Father, I pray that you would use this hour for your honor and your glory. That you would be glorified and magnified in all that's said and done in this place. Father, that you would hide me behind the cross. Father, if you would take what few words are said here this morning, that you would use it for your honor and for your glory. And may we uh, lift up and magnify the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, may you draw all men and compel them to come unto you. We'll praise you. We'll love you for it. In Jesus' precious name we pray and thank you. Amen. Thank you guys for uh, being here this morning and for singing songs of praise and uh, time together with uh, God. And, uh, this is uh, what it's about. And I apologize for the distractions with the, the sound. We will get all of that figured out, square away. If I've got to meet this one, we'll deal with that. Just turn it off and just pump the other one up if need be, if it keeps doing it. But um, we'll just go with that for now. Uh, Y'all can hear me good? All right, good. I think we can just turn the whole thing off if need be. <laughs> all right. Uh, we as children of God should be able to read this passage that we're hearing this morning. And find great comfort in it. Boy, it's a, an, an amazing thing to know that uh, when we pass uh, from this life, uh, that we are forever with the Lord. Boy, it's a, a, an amazing thing to know that when I stand before God, or when as we're living this life, one day we're going to be raptured out of here uh, and be in the presence of Almighty God. Boy, that is an exciting, uh, thrilling thought. For us as children of God, I know that uh, my children are, are standing in the door and uh, jumping up and down when they realize that dad is home. Boy, what an amazing thing, an amazing time, an awesome time to uh, to be able to spend uh, with your father. And this is uh, our, our heavenly father that we have long anticipated and we don't know when he's coming. And we don't know when he may call us home. But boy, the reunion that takes place when we see Jesus face to face. I cannot wait for that moment. I'm excited about that moment when I see my Savior face to face. But I want you to know, uh, as the scripture says, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Well, we're, we're thrilled about that thought. I hope you're thrilled. Because there are many this morning that cannot take comfort in this passage. Boy, as a church, as the children of God, we should take great comfort in it. And it's not just one group that doesn't take comfort in this passage. I, I want you to, to pay close attention to this because I don't want us as Christians to be drawn into this. When uh, Dad was coming home and I wasn't so thrilled. It had been a long day. It was about to get a little bit longer. And I don't want us there. I don't want any child of God there. Where we're living in such a way and behaving in such a way that, yeah, he's coming again. The thought of the Savior coming again, the, the thought of being face to face in the presence of Almighty God kind of makes you tremble. We should be excited about that. 
We, we should find joy and anticipation. Well, we should be waiting and, and preparing and doing everything we can to make sure that we're ready for that moment. Not sitting back saying, oh, I wish I hadn't done that. I wish I hadn't lived this way. I wish I hadn't behaved myself that way. The beauty of this thing, the, the uniqueness about it, my children know when I get home. They can tell you about where the sun's at. They can tell you about the, the different things. They can tell you. It's just a feeling that you get. It's about time for dad to get home. I knew when my dad was going to be home. I knew about the time he got home. And we start asking mom, where's dad? Dad on, on his way yet? Because we knew it was about that time. I'm sure you get the same questions. Where, where's dad? Is he there yet? Is he here yet? Is he on his way? Because uh, you're anticipating it. But when I was in trouble, I didn't, I didn't ask those questions. Uh, I wasn't looking for that moment. I remember, I remember my brothers diving onto the couch, slinging the, wind, the curtains open, and looking out in expectation. And you always knew the one that wasn't so excited. He wasn't on the couch in the window. He's kind of looking out the door like this. Because trouble's coming. <laughs> you, you brought some things upon yourself. And uh, it's because of my dad that we are like we are today. <laughs> but I thank God for him, for the mom and dad that God gave me. Some people think that, oh, you lived a terrible life because you was kidding. No, 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 no. That is the way it's supposed to be. And that, that kept me from uh, doing some things that now authorities have to deal with me because I didn't listen to my father and respect my father, and my father was there in my life. It's important that men deal with their children and raise their children for God. Don't, don't sit there and say, oh, you lived a terrible life. No, I lived the best life. I, I had it good. I wish every child had that. I wish every child had a dad that was there in their life. And if you don't have that, I've told t children numerous times, there's a heavenly father. There's a heavenly father. You may not have that earthly father right here. He may be calling you and nagging you because he wants something from you, but that's not the heavenly father. Well, we have a father that wants to, to uh, have you excited and thrilled about his presence. The lost dread the day of the Lord. But so does that child of God that's not living like he should be. But that's a terrible thought. Dad's coming, though. I don't want to see that. Father's coming on. I really don't want to see Father. The Savior's coming back. The trumpet's sounding. Oh. No. Well, I, want, I want to be shouting for joy all the way into the presence of the Savior. I do. And I, I want to just shout and rejoice every moment. I think we will. But there are some burdens that we put upon ourselves that choke us up down here in this life. We're going to realize face to face with Jesus that he's put our sins as far as the east is from the west. I don't, I don't want you to get you caught up on that and thinking that he's going to sit there and uh, but there's going to be some chasing. <laughs> there's going to be some dealing with some things. But you're a son. You're a child of God. You are here. You know why my dad chasing me and not the kids down the road? Because they weren't his. I belonged to him. And he, as much as he cared about them, I was his. And he was going to make sure that I knew the rules of the house and what structure and order was. And boy, children need that today. They need that. Not everyone is comforted at the thought of seeing the father, the slothful Christian, the lazy Christian. The Christian who's hidden the talent that God's given. Well, you have an ability and you're not using it for God. There's coming a day when you won't be able to. God's given you a voice, use it. God's given you an ability, use it. Because the day is coming where God's going to call you home. And there will be no more opportunity to glorify God with the talent that he's given you. Boy, I want to take the time right now to glorify God. Boy, the, the faithful church isn't terrified 
of Christ coming back. But a slothful church, uh, a church that God's going to have to deal with about some things, they got lazy and not soul winning, uh, I, I don't want to be that church. I want to be a church that is on fire for God, that is serving God. Doesn't mean we're perfect. Doesn't mean we're without fault. Doesn't mean we, we uh, don't have things that we deal with. Doesn't mean that uh, Satan doesn't tempt us. Boy, we have the same thing that is going on across the United States of America happening in here today. But we have a zeal for God. We have a desire to do something for God. And boy, God takes that person and has that talent and he multiplies it and God blesses it. God gives him more. Well, you think you're doing something now. Wait till you see what God has waiting for you in heaven. But if you're not doing anything, hmm, I, I can see why you're a little discouraged. You're not so thrilled or excited. For the lost, I'd say this, don't get left behind. There are many that claim to be Christians, claim to be saved, sitting in the house of God, singing the songs of praise, bow their head in prayer, will say amen at the right point, and they're lost in need of the Savior. Don't get left behind. Have you seen the pictures? They show a, a church, a congregation sitting there, and all of a sudden, there's only a portion of them left. It's like, what just happened? And they use that to, to describe uh, the rapture. Don't think that everybody sitting in church is saved and on fire for God and uh, ready just to serve God. There are people sitting in church that need to get saved, that, that need to come to uh, a realization of who Christ really is and who he wants to be to them and how much he loves them and how much he wants to call them son and daughter and to be their father. God loves them. And they're sitting there prayerfully one day before it's too late, they get saved. But many people are going to say one day, I wish I had more time. I wish I had more time. But why do you wish you had more time? I would have done this. I would have done that. That child of God, I can hear saying, I wish I had given God my all. I wish I had done more for God. I wish I had taken the time to do more soul winning. I wish I had taken the time to do more scripture reading. I wish I had taken the time to live more like Christ would have me to live, not less. Boy, those people that passed me. Well, there's going to be a day when we can, God's going to have to wipe the tears from our eyes. We're going to see some things like that. God's just going to have to wipe those tears. I believe we're going to see those that are suffering. And I think we're going to want to do everything we can to cry. And God's just going to have to wipe the tears. I wonder if we may see somebody that, boy, we didn't tell about him. Boy, you know what that will do to us? Oh, I wish. I wish, I wish I told him. Instead of wishing, go ahead and tell him. Instead of regretting later, go ahead and do now what you wish you had done later. Go ahead and live for God today. Stand for God today. Don't miss out on the relationship you can have with God. Child of that lost sinner, don't miss out on the real deal sitting next to it. Judas was right there next to Jesus everywhere he went, holding the money bag and went straight to hell. Him. How much closer can you get to Jesus? Well, physically speaking, he couldn't. But spiritually, a lot closer. But he didn't. And I promise you, he wishes he had. And I don't want anyone in here under the sound of our voice with a watch of life or may watch later. To wish one day that they had more time. Boy, settle this thing now. Look at Matthew chapter 24 and verse 36. Matthew 24 and verse 36. There are some that they don't even pretend to be saved. They don't go to church. They want to drink their beer and do with it. Uh, live life how they want to live it. And laugh at those that do uh, live for God. And they just don't care. Absolutely do not care. Well, the day is coming. The day is coming when they will wish. They had had more time and had taken care of business. You know, uh, I keep saying I wish I had more time. But I, I want you to get this thought in your head and, and, and let, it, let it stay there. God gave you all the necessary time. And many will say, I wish I had more time. But God gave you all the necessary time. 
from the wasteland. You squandered it. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 36. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. Boy, I, I can imagine that one wishing he had told him if he's in the field with him and hadn't said a word to him about Jesus. The other left. Or maybe he did tell him and the other refused. And he's wishing he had received the promise. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. The one shall be taken and the other left. Verse 42. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this. That if the goodman of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man is coming. Boy, we know a thief's coming. We know the time. We know the date. Boy, we're sitting here ready, locked and loaded. Uh, you may forget to call law enforcement because you're ready to deal with it. I, I can deal with this one on my own. I, I come in my house. That's where we're at. I'm prepared for you. Hey, how prepared are you for the Savior? Are you that prepared? But see, this is the thing. You don't know when the thief's coming. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know what may take place. We were headed here, was it Friday there? Friday. About 15 minutes from the house. Somebody not paying attention on the interstate on their phone. Big dude, big old truck started coming on the night right on us. And I didn't see it. She saw it. I'm sitting there trying to, there's a vehicle next to me that I'm waiting on him to pass so I can get all over, get out of the way of the car in front of me. And he just starts drifting and she, she tells me the car's coming over. And it was, the car isn't just coming over, it's come over. And all I could do was kind of shift between both lanes. He had no warning and anything. Could have been a simple accident. Could have been very bad. Could have been and the angel of God, the angel of the Lord, that came up around about here. Someone that I can think. There was a horn. What? And that was about it. You know, you kind of, I don't even want to see. And you look up and with that angel, you about to see his wings. That's how close he was to us. God was just protecting us. And he was still doing his drifting thing, but he had gotten up ahead enough where I could get back over. And I think we messed the other guy up a little bit. He's sitting back there. He actually pulled off. We pulled off, made sure everybody's good when we get down the road. But that times, you know not. Could change everything. How are you living? What's your testimony? You know, people talk about that, that loved one. Boy, I want to make sure that everything's right between us. That son or that daughter, I want to make sure everything's right. You never know what a day may bring for. We have absolutely no idea. But I tell you what, I tell you who does know. He knows. And I'll tell you what he said, be ready. Well, what is it? <laughs> Be ready. Because if all of us knew the day, the time, the moment, boy, everybody on earth, okay, all right, let me say a quick prayer. We're down to the last three seconds. Okay, don't say Jesus. All right, I made it in. But boy, I lived life how I wanted to, but now I'm, no, be ready. Be ready. Well, I, I choose to live this way. Be ready. You're not ready. And you never know when it may happen. Never know. A guy that I work with, real quiet guy. And I found out, he didn't say anything to me, but I found out 
that two months ago his wife passed. I'm going to say, man, he's dying like that. And there's nothing, there's, there's no. You can't change it when God says it's time. You have no control, no authority, no power over this at all. This is God's thing. And this is God's control. And God said, it's time. That may be the end of the night for me. It may be 20 years. I don't know. But I better be ready. I know that much. As a child of God, I better be ready. Hey, even more so for that lost soul. Be ready. Because your soul is nothing you want to play with. To spend all eternity away from God is nothing you want to do. You may have, may have lived a life of sin, but I promise you, the last thing you ever uh, would think about is being away from God for all eternity. Even here in this earth, while you're living in sin, doping it up, smoking it up, doing whatever you're doing, God's grace is present with you. God's showing you mercy. God's showing you kindness. You know how many people have overdosed on some of the same things that people are smoking and shooting up their veins today? What's to say it won't be that person tonight? Boy, they had something laced in their stuff and they didn't know it. And they took it and never woke up. You never know. Be ready. Don't miss out on the real deal because you only pretend it to be the real deal. Don't sit in church and pretend for anybody. I've said it before, I'll say it again. I won't go to hell for anyone. My soul's too important to God. It's too important to me. Where, I, where I'm spending all eternity, it, it, it means something to me. And it's so important to God that Christ's blood was shed for it. That's how important and serious this thing is. Why miss out on eternity with Christ when it's free to me? Why is it so important that you only pretend to know Christ? It's, it's difficult for me. And I, and I did this. It's difficult to understand how we can sit in church.
in their sorrows and, and met, boy, kind of hide ourselves and distract ourselves from, from what we have been doing all our life because we know the day is coming. We know his wrath is coming. We know he's angry with the wicked every day. We hear it from the preachers. We hear it from his servants. We hear that God is angry with the wicked every day. We expect that his wrath is coming one day, but I'm having too much fun. I'm living my life how I want to live. I care about doing what I want to do. I don't want anything to do with God, but the day is coming when you'll say, I wish, I wish, I wish I had handled this. I wish I had dealt with this. Why play with your soul? Why play that game? Well, this thing that God has given you is precious. I don't want to stand in fear and dread of God. Let me tell you, you don't have to. He loved you so much. But that dread you're feeling, Christ took it so that you didn't have to deal with it. Boy, he bore that dread, that sin. So much so that he cried out to the Father, why hast thou forsaken me? So that all those lost sinners don't have to dread my return. That's why. So that they can receive my grace. That's why. Because I love them so much. That's why. But as much as God loves you, you don't think he loved his son? You don't think he gave, he, he, he would give all for his son? Boy, he, this is the one that never went against him. This is the one that always pleased him. Yet for us, he died. Yet for us, he turned his back against him. Yet for us, he was satisfied with what Christ did. The day is coming when you don't accept that. The greatest gift, that that anger that Christ felt, that wrath that was poured out upon Christ, that dread that Christ dealt with from God the Father, every lost sinner that doesn't receive Christ will deal with that. There's no way to, to pretty that up. There's no way to put a smile on somebody's face with that. But that's the truth. And I want everyone to be ready for that day. Doesn't mean everyone will be ready. But boy, I'm going to do my part to make sure I see them ready. I mentioned to you the servants and their talents. Boy, God has given each and every one of us in here a talent. Something that we can do for God. Boy, your, your thing may be that God has you as a soul winner. Now, every one of us are soul winners. We should be. Boy, the God says you're wise if you win it soul. But some people, it just seems like some people really got that thing. I mean, they just, boy, they got a knack for it. They can do it. And uh, it's amazing to watch. But if you have that talent, you say, I'm busy living my life. Don't expect God to bless. Hey, your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Yes, you have a home in heaven. But don't expect more talents. As a matter of fact, God will take the talent that he's given you and give to another. I, I don't want that for anybody. And too many are saying, I wish I had more time. How often have we heard, I wish I served God when I was younger? I wish I served God when I had my head. I wish I served God before uh, uh, smoking my brains away. I I've heard that. People say that now. I'm old and I can't do what I used to do. And I, I can't serve God like I want to. But what did you do with your life? We should be doing everything we can to serve God now. Hey, serve God with your youth. Let God use you. Or if God can use a young man like David, surely he can use you. And God wants to. I don't want to look back on my life and say, oh. But, and I'm saved. Looking back on a life as a Christian and saying, oh, man, I, I wasted my life. And now you know what you're doing? You're still wasting your life. Because instead of serving God, now you're looking back on the past. Walking backwards. Saying, boy, I wish I had done it. And you're still not paying attention. I wish I had done it. Oh, Lord. I need to be doing right now. Before time runs out. The Bible talks about redeeming the time because the days are evil. 
Let's, let's serve God and live for God. Many are going to be saying, I, I wish I had given God my best. I wish I had given 100%. I wish I hadn't played around so much. Well, I acted like life was just a game and I was supposed to have all kinds of fun. And I'm not against having fun and enjoying life. I'm not against that. But I'm for doing something for God. Boy, could you imagine? Nah, I'll get to that. But what you didn't realize was time was at home. Your side. Time was at home. Your side. Well, we think we got tomorrow. Well, we just go to bed thinking I'll wake up tomorrow. This is my day. This is what I plan to do. I, I had the weekend all planned out. New things that needed to get done. Knew I was going to be out here at 6 in the morning and what needed to be done Saturday morning. And we got a meeting Saturday and get all these things organized. But it could have been that, uh, hey, uh, time ran out. And it could be any day. So I'm going to take today and whatever time I have left to use it for God. Whether it's three days, three years, or 30 years. I don't know. But I hate to look back and say, man, I wish, I wish I had more time. I want to be able to look back as Paul said, I fought a good fight. I finished the thing. I finished my course. I don't want to be saying I wish. And I don't want anyone in here to be saying I wish. Well, that's not what you want. We get no do-overs. You know, yesterday, whatever you did, is done. Ten years ago, what you did, it's done. Don't sit there and live in the regrets of the past. Well, you may not have done all of this. Not everyone has done everything they should have done. But what are you doing today? Are you wasting today? Are, are we living for God today? We don't get another shot at yesterday. Do something right here and right now. While you can for God. 1 Corinthians 3 and verse 13 says, Every man's works will be made manifest. For the day shall declare, because it shall be revealed by fire. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. If any man's work abide which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Now, this is talking about the Christian. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. You know what? I don't want that. I, I, I don't want to be suffering loss. Not when I'm going to be in the presence of God. And this should be a joyful time. This should be an exciting time. Boy, this should be a time where, boy, there's tears of joy. And he's wiping those tears away. Instead of, I'm, I'm such a loss. Oh, I wish I had. Oh, I wish I had. Don't live like this. Serve God now. Yeah, there are going to be some regrets. No, not everyone's perfect. No, no one's perfect. There's some, some faults and mistakes in our lives. We said, man, I wish I hadn't done that. Hey, don't do it today. Live for God today. Serve God today. Stand for God today. I don't want everything I did to burn up. Some people have been running from God, hide from God, avoiding God as church. But on that day, there's nowhere to run. There's nowhere to hide. Just you and God. And I don't want you standing before God and everything that you did made of wood, hay, and stuff. It wasn't uh, based on the word of God and the, 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 through faith in God. But it was off of your life, your decision, your plans, what you have a, a, um, planned for the future. And all that stuff just burns up. You know, you can be doing some good things. And I'm doing things in the church. I'm doing that. I, I, and pastor, isn't this a good thing to do? God, isn't this a great thing for me to be doing? And you're doing it with the wrong motive. It's going to burn up. Boy, it looked good. Uh, a, a kid obeying parents. Mom and dad looked good, but mom and dad said, take out the trash. You go and take out the trash. But why are you taking out the trash? You, <laughs> you obey, but uh, with the wrong attitude. And we expect God to bless. Now, I, I, I don't want to look back and say, man, I, I served y'all. I, I did. But we read about how some have preached Christ in contention. I, I don't want that to be my, my ministry. I was a bitter preacher, a contentious preacher. Well, I wanted to be that I preach because of my love for God, but Paul said, I don't care whether they do or not, Christ is preached. 
I hear, at least the gospel is being preached. But my heart of heart says, I don't want to be that one. I want to be one that preaches Christ for who Christ is and not because of, uh, they said this, but let me tell you how it is. No, I want to preach Christ. I want people to know the love of Christ. Serving God for the wrong reason will burn up. You know, some people do it to be seen of men. Make a name for themselves. Pastor, look at what I did. Look at my accomplishments. People do it on jobs. To, to move up and to, to gain ranking, to get that position. And they'll step on their co-worker to get to that position. And, uh, yeah, they kind of, you see a lot of that in the world. But as a child of God, uh, no, that's my brother. That's my sister in Christ. Well, we should have the same love one for another and concern and zeal for the things of God. We shouldn't be trying to uh, make somebody else look bad and make ourselves look good. God sees us for who we are. There's no pretending with him. Pretend with us in here, but God sees it. Well, I, I don't want to be uh, living my life that way. You know, time to please God. Time to serve God. Time to honor God. Time to love God. Time to do the will of God. Time to labor for God. Time for toiling in the ministry. Time to run that race. Time to press toward the mark. Time to stand. Time to, to do everything that God has given you to do. Time to use your talent well. Time to serve the Lord with gladness. Time to, to be excited about the work of God is running out. Now, I'm not preaching this message this morning to discourage you. I don't want everybody thinking negative. Time is running out on me. No. The time here is running out. And for me, that's exciting. You know, I take comfort in that. You know, that tells me that if time is running out, this isn't a, a dreadful thing for me. My father's coming again. He did say, I will come again. He did say he went to prepare a place for me. He did talk about the mansion. Boy, I'm, I'm excited to see what's there. On the way here, I was thinking, man, these roads that we're riding on, I'm paying very careful attention to the roads this morning as well as they were. These roads, you expand from the East Coast all the way to the West Coast. I mean, they got gravel roads, they got uh, pavement, all kind of all, uh, the tar and all kind of things they use to make these roads. But in heaven, the streets of God. I was thinking about this and man, if man, if man can take roads from the East Coast to the West Coast, that's just the Oh, I can't wait to see what God's done. And we're just talking about the streets. The mansions that God has prepared, the things that are in store for us, I am anticipating. So when I say time's running out, I'm not trying to discourage you. Oh, every child of God, we should take courage. With every tick of the clock, with every minute that passes, I don't have yesterday, man. I don't have you. No, 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 no. I don't have yesterday because I'm a step closer to the same. <laughs> I'm getting that much closer with every step, every breath, every thought, every comment, every action, everything is getting me closer. And boy, that, that realization, this is what it should do to us. Let me make sure. I'm as ready as I can be. Because precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. It's a precious thing. It's beautiful, y'all, when he calls a, a child home. Boy, one, one minute walking with God, and the next minute, he's not. <laughs> what happened? God took it. Man, it's time for a reunion. One unlike you've ever had before. One unlike anything you've ever known. And one you won't ever get over. Well, to see Jesus face to face, that is something that thrills my soul. Just the thought of it. 
And I have yet to see him. But you know what? I have a promise. And one day I will. One day I will. And I don't say, oh, one day I'm going to see Jesus. <laughs> oh, no. No, 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 no. I don't want us living like that. And if you're living like that, Check yourself. Because that tells me in here, in that home, something's not right. It may be that you don't know the Savior. Or it may be you need to go correct some things. You know, I want to make the most of today. Look at 2 Peter with me. 2 Peter chapter 3. As we draw to a close here, 2 Peter chapter 3. Oh, this is this is exciting stuff, knowing that he's coming again. It's exciting, exciting time. Second Peter chapter three and verse eight. Beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us, but not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come. As a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up. Verse 11 Seeing then, we know this, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought we to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God? Wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Well, I tell you, that, that's what I want. Verse 13 says, Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, we look, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, you're anticipating it, be diligent. Be diligent. That you may be found of him in peace, without spot, and blameless. Well, how does a child of God be found in peace? Well, they're diligent. Diligence, that's something that could really be learned today. Well, so many are diligent about the wrong things. But if we're diligent about spiritual things, spiritual matters, diligent about souls, diligent about our standing, our faithfulness to God, diligent about being prepared for our Savior when he returns. Boy, be wise stewards, diligent, persevere, stand fast, press toward the Lord. Use the time that you have wisely. Because we never know what they may bring to us. That fast it can happen. Again, my wife saw it before I saw it uh, the other day. I mean, it was that fast. And our lives could have changed forever that fast. But God, I can't do anything about yesterday. But by his grace, I can do something today. His mercies are new every morning. I can labor for the Lord today. I can faithfully serve God today. Well, man, you, you have a checkered path. You have done this, and you have done that. Paul used to persecute Christians. Boy, he was one that used to terrorize the people of God. They see him coming and run the other way. He was known, for he held the crows of the men that stoned Stephen. But God took that same man who had a checkered past, who was known as a murderer, and used him for his honor. God can't use you. Paul said he was the chief of sinners because he persecuted the church of God. God can use you. As a matter of fact, God wants to. And I can look with anticipation and take comfort in the fact that he's coming again. Well, oh, we should be in the window waiting. He's coming. He's coming. We should be listening for the sound 
of the trunk. Well, if you're doing that, you're anticipating. You're not sitting there meddling in the world and living like the world because if you're living like them, you're not listening for him. If you're behaving like them, you're not listening for him. Well, we should be all eyes on Christ and our ears attentive to the trunk. It's coming. One day the trumpet will sound. As that trumpet sounds, I'm a warning. A heart sick and good. No, that's not what I want. And I don't want that for anybody in here. What I want is a shout of joy. The Father's here. It's time to meet him. And to see him face to face. Because that trumpet is going to sound more like anything you've ever heard before. <laughs> it'll be beautiful. Well, if he calls us home before then, it's still him calling. It's going to be beautiful. And when you stand face to face with him, all that other stuff, it won't really matter anymore. You're going to see him for who he is. What an amazing time that will be. For any lost, please don't play with your soul. Don't. Your life is too precious. Christ said, now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. For the saved, tomorrow is not promised. For the lost, tomorrow is not promised. Both may stand before God one day. I want you to be ready. Heavenly Father, God, I pray that you would take this time around your word. Father, that you would challenge us as Christians. Father, maybe we haven't lived like we should be. Well, a message like this is going to get us back on track. I don't want any of us sitting back wishing we had had more time to be more people. God, let us use the time that you've given us today. Use it for your honor, for your glory. To see souls saved and lives changed. Father, we can plant the seed with the water. God, we want to give you the increase. That's something that's out of our control. That's something we cannot do anything about. We leave that to you. But what you have given us to do, the talent that you have given us, Father, let us multiply. May you be glorified in it. We pray for that also. Father, would you save them before it's too late? We praise you and love you for it. Thank you.